Actually, meteorites can easily be distinguished from NASA's moon rocks by their mineralogy, bulk chemical composition, and oxygen isotope ratios. About 85% of all meteorites that fall to Earth are common chondrites, which are composed mostly of silicate materials, olivine and proxene. While these silicate materials are found in moon rocks, many chondrites found on Earth also contain significant amounts of water and hydrous minerals due to their exposure to Earth's environment. Minerals not found in any moon rocks. By comparing NASA's moon rocks and the Luna samples to common meteorites and Earth rocks, scientists have developed a set of quantitative tests that they can perform to classify unknown rocks or meteorites. For example, the iron plus magnesium to aluminum ratios are higher in NASA's moon rocks than in Earth rocks, but generally less than an average chondrite. This diagram Webb obviously took from this online article by Mark Gonzalez of the North Dakota Geological Survey. This article is pretty much a carbon copy of Randy Korotev's web page, How Do We Know It's a Rock from the Moon? In fact, all the ratio charts that Webb shows were copied from charts previously posted by Korotev. For reasons already discussed, I question the site's reliability. Still, let's take a look at this diagram. Corrative averages the ferrous oxide and magnesium oxide percentages for moon rocks between 7 and 36%, and the aluminium oxide content between 8% and 31%. He narrows down terrestrial crust to 11% ferrous and magnesium oxide and 16% aluminium oxide. And for chondrites, down to 59% FeO and MgO and 2% Al2O3. Gonzalez copied this word for word in his graph, but there is one glaring difference between Korotev's diagram and Gonzalez's diagram. Korotev's image also covers tektites, Gonzalez's doesn't. And curiously, Webb avoids mention of tektites altogether. And instead of showing the more complete diagram from Korotev's site, Webb favours a diagram that omits tektites from this comparison. Why do you suppose Webb did that? Maybe Webb was concerned that those outside his adoring fans would learn something rather damaging to his claims. I get tons of emails from people telling me about tektites and asking me to do a video on them. Well, here goes. Firstly, what is a tektite? We'll let the angry video game nerd tell us its definition. Tectite, any of several kinds of small glassy bodies in various forms occurring in Australia and elsewhere now believed to have been produced by the impact of meteorites on the Earth's surface. Most scientists believe that tectites are molten glass that are produced during meteoroid impact with the Earth. The glass is then hurled up back into space by the collision where it dries and then falls back down to Earth. At least, that's what most scientists believe. Other scientists, most notably NASA's very own Dr. John O'Keefe, believe tektites are in fact of lunar origin. Why? Because of their striking similarities to Apollo samples, or at least the creep rocks and the glassy portions of Apollo samples. Kurative puts tektites having substantially lower FeO, MgO and al 3 percentages than moon rocks, but this is incorrect. In the June 5th, 1970 issue of Science, John O'Keefe wrote an article titled Tektite Glass Found in Apollo 12 Sample. The sample in question is number 12013. O'Keefe compared the sample to two tektites from Java, Javanite 86 and Javanite 87. Chemically, the Apollo 12 sample had a weight percentage of 12% aluminium oxide. J87 and J86 were 12.6% and 12.2% respectively. And for ferrous oxide, 
Sample 12013 was 10%, with its tektite friends being 8.5 and 9%. And for magnesium oxide, 6% for Apollo 12, and 6.8% for J87, and 8% for J86. This is not consistent with a diagram Webb copied from Karatev's site. Giving him his credits, he got the aluminium weight percentage for tektites correct. But if we take into consideration the iron plus magnesium percentages of tektites and the Apollo 12 creep, they should be located up here. Interestingly, now that we have the tektites and their creep brother in the right place on the graph, they are beginning to fall along the line that Karatev plots for moon rocks. Although, they are not as close to the line as the other rocks on the graph. Being fair, perhaps Karatev is only comparing tektites to the more stony lunar samples, not the glassy ones. Even if so, the similarities are as clear as day. Other than having about twice as much calcium oxide, creep sample 12013 is almost identical in composition to tektites. These and other similarities led O'Keefe to conclude that tektites found on Earth are of lunar origin. In conclusion, the glass of sample 12013 appears to be tektite glass by all the usual tests. Its constitution answers the arguments given by proponents of the terrestrial origin of tektites to the effect that only sedimentary processes can produce the typical tektite composition. There appears to be no sound reason not to say that tektites come from the moon. Other Apollo samples also shared the same chemical characteristics as tektites, such as Apollo 14 sample 14425. O'Keefe was quoted to saying, if 14425 was found in Antarctica instead of Fra Moro, it would probably have been accepted as a tektite. We will leave this discussion of tektites there for now. Returning to Webb's parroting of Korotev's information, we find some more anomalies. Firstly, Korotev's diagrams compare lunar meteorites to the Earth's crust alone. That's the only undeniable Earth material that he compares them to. He makes no attempt to compare these meteorites to basalts, which are rocks from the Earth's mantle. Those are the rocks that are vastly similar to the Apollo samples. If we take the data for the average sea basalts JSC1A and JSC1AF and apply it to this graph, we find that they plot perfectly along the line for lunar rocks. Secondly, the only non-terrestrial material that Korotev compares lunar meteorites to are chondrites. Other than Onuma's paper, which stated that ordinary chondrites have oxygen isotope ratios within the same range for Apollo samples, all sources I've read seem to agree that chondrites are absolutely nothing like Apollo samples as far as compositions are concerned. But there are various other non-lunar meteorites that do seem to match up to those samples. Eucrites and Howardites come to mind. In the previous episode, we noted that Turkovich and his team compared the Surveyor 5 soil data with both terrestrial basalts and eucrites, and they found all three types of rock have the exact same elements in overwhelmingly similar proportions. When NASA distributed the Apollo samples across the world, mineralogist Brian Mason and petrologist William G. Melson made further comparisons. They compared Apollo 11 sample 10057 to the Moore County Eucrite and the Capoeta Howardite, respectively discovered in 1949 and 1966. On page 109 of their NASA-funded 1970 book, The Lunar Rocks, Mason and Melson write, The case for Eucrites and Howardites is considerably stronger. The initial analysis at the Surveyor 5 site indicated a comparability with calcium-rich achondrites, although the refinement of the data showed the titanium content was much higher than any known achondrite. However, it now appears that this very high titanium content may be specific to Mare Tranquillitatis. Apart from their titanium content, the Apollo 11 and even more the Apollo 12 rocks are quite comparable in chemical and mineralogy composition to some of the eucrites. This comparison for the Moore County Eucrite is illustrated in Table 6-3 and Figure 6-5. 
Table 6-3 shows that subtraction of 20% by weight of ilmenite from a typical Apollo 11 sample basalt produces a composition nearly identical with that of the Moore County Eucrite. Here is Table 6-3. As you can see, it compares not only the Eucrite, but also the Howardite, which the authors indicate also closely resemble Apollo samples in chemical structure. Howardites, exemplified by Capoeta, resemble Eucrites in composition, except they consistently contain less plagioclase and more pyroxene, but are characterized by a microbreccia structure with angular fragments of pyroxene and plagioclase and occasional composite fragments in a ground mass of comminuted pyroxene and plagioclase. This structure is similar to that of the lunar microbreccias, and the similarity is enhanced by the presence of rare fragments of nickel iron in both. The principal distinction is that Capoeta, and the other Howardites as far as we have examined, does not contain the glass sphere rules and fragments that make up a minor part of the lunar microbreccias. We'll deal with those glass spherules later. For now, we'll use this chart as we go through the major elements that Webb insists make meteorites differ so much from the Apollo samples. And remember, Webb builds his entire claim that all meteorites are different to the Apollo samples purely on the chemical composition of one meteorite class. Chondrites. Not meteorites in general, just chondrites. The iron plus magnesium to aluminum ratios are higher in NASA's moon rocks than in earth rocks, but generally less than an average chondrite. Here is Mason and Melson's chart again. As with the deep sea basalts that we compared the Apollo samples to earlier, we find that the compositions of Apollo samples, Eucrites, and Howardites are virtually identical. I won't bore you by reading out all the numbers. Viewers are more than welcome to pause the video and make the comparisons themselves. For now, let's get what we came here for. The aluminium oxide content is 15.57% for Eucrites, and 9.46% for Howardites. Eucrites contain 15.69% ferrous oxide and 8.41% magnesium oxide. And for Howardites, 17.16 FeO and 12% MgO. When we do the math and work out the ratios between aluminium and iron plus magnesium weight percentages, we find that both these meteorites fall perfectly along the line for lunar rocks. The Eucrite lands smack dead in the center of the line, and the Howardite is a perfect match for a few Maria samples on the list. Similarly, the iron to manganese ratio is higher in NASA's moon rocks than in Earth rocks, and less than the average chondrite. You call that higher? Look how close the Earth crust is to the line for moon rocks. Likewise, if we take the ratios of iron and manganese for the earth basalts we looked at earlier, we find they land here, here, and here, and here. They all seem to have fallen along the line for moon rocks. Now let's compare meteorites. We already looked at their iron oxides. As far as manganese oxide goes, the Moore County Eucrite is 0.31% by weight. This places the rock here. At first, it may seem to be further away from the line, but for comparative purposes, we all take the iron manganese ratio of the average compositions of rocks from all six missions, plus those for the Apollo 11 samples with reduced ilmenite contents, and put those on the graph too. Although most of these average ratios seem to cluster around the line, the average Apollo 16 soil deviates noticeably from this line and the ratios for the reduced Ilmenite Apollo 11 samples are quite similar to Eucrites. Unfortunately, this chart only goes as far as 0.36% as far as manganese goes, so we won't be able to plot where Howardites fall on this graph. Still, it is clear that Eucrites and Earth basalts are not so different to the Apollo samples as far as iron and manganese ratios go.